Good evening and thank you for joining us. We begin tonight with a fatal traffic accident near the Hong Kong Shenzhen border. Two taxi drivers were killed on the Hong Kong Shenzhen Western Corridor after the pair were hit by another car while discussing an earlier collision between them. The Mo Sengai reports. After the accident, the front end of the two taxis was severely damaged. Car components and objects were scattered across the road. The windscreen of the private car was smashed. The incident happened at around 3 p.m. when the two taxis were heading to the Shenzhen Bay control point. A collision was said to have happened when one taxi tried to overtake another. Sources say the drivers got out of the vehicles to argue about the incident before the silver car crashed into the taxis and the pair. The taxi drivers were sent to Tianshui Wai Hospital and was later pronounced dead. A similar tragedy happened in March. A truck driver killed another man after the latter stood next to his car on a road because of an accident which took place earlier. President of the Hong Kong Automobile Association, Ringo Lee, said members of the public should not stop their vehicles and stand in the middle of a road if they caught up in a small incident. Wim's Night, TVB News. Chief Executive John Lee continued to meet the public to collect views ahead of the October policy address. He visited the Sha Tin district and interacted with residents. Memo Sengai again. Chief Executive John Lee arrived at Wartier Estate in Sha Tin this morning for another district inspection. Lee was joined by Secretary for Home and Youth Affairs Alex Mark and Secretary for Labor and Welfare Chris Soon. The CEO and officials visited a family where a member was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy. The mother, aged 70, cares for a 40-year-old daughter alone. She said the service provider at a community rehabilitation center helps reduce her burden as a carer. Lee spent roughly 15 minutes with the family and left. On his way to Lake Yun Estate, he stopped and spoke with residents. Mm. Lee asked this boy if he would come to the playground after school. The boy said he likes playing video games. Lee advised the boy to study hard and do some exercise in his leisure time. Lee then spent some time at SAHK New Territories East Community Rehabilitation Day Center before leaving to another public housing, Shako Estate. He visited a renovated unit previously occupied by a tenant who was proven to have abused public housing resources. The CE then sat down in an eatery where he had some food and interacted with residents. You Speaking to the media, Lee said the government understands that subdivided housing is a crucial issue. He said the government will reveal details to tackle the issue in the upcoming policy address. He said authorities hope to eradicate subdivided units completely in the city. The next policy address will be announced in about two weeks. Rooms 9, TV News. The National Day public holiday will commence next Tuesday, but plenty of residents have started their vacation early. Crowds of Hong Kong people flocked to Law Wu to cross the border to the mainland, and the passenger flow was smooth. A resident said he has taken leave from this Monday. Mr. Wong said he could enjoy a four-day-long holiday just by taking one-day leave. He is planning to spend two days in the mainland and two days in Hong Kong. Another local resident, Mr. Leung, said things in the mainland are cheaper and there are lots of attractions to visit. The mainland's Golden Week holiday begins this Tuesday, but not many holiday makers visit the city today. Visitor Ms. Tin said she came to Hong Kong for a concert and will stay for around four to five days after that. She also learned that a fireworks display will light up Victoria Harbor on National Day, and the event was promoted on the mainland social media platform. Authorities estimated about 10 million people, including residents and tourists, will travel in and out of Hong Kong via air, sea and land from today to October 7th. Members of the public are advised to use an immigration department app to receive the latest information about the waiting time at the ports. remains in critical condition following a stitching procedure in Yanchai Hospital in May. 
Two staff members involved in the procedure were arrested by the police and they were accused of child abuse. The case will be taken to court next Monday. David Garrett reports. On May 25th, a girl had a cardiac arrest after she received stitches for a head wound in the accident and emergency department of Yan Chai Hospital. A 26-year-old nurse and a 62-year-old patient care assistant have been arrested. The police said the two staff were suspected of child abuse, assaulting or neglecting the child whom they're in charge of. Her father said he saw the staff put the girl's face against a pillow and called the police. The father of the girl is delighted to see progress. He hopes for justice for his daughter. Medical sector lawmaker David Lamb commented the arrest may make people wonder if there were mistakes when handling the case. Chan Wai Man, the financial secretary of the Association of Hong Kong Nursing Staff, was shot. The strike that Israel says killed Nasrallah came as their prime minister addressed the UN General Assembly. Benjamin Netanyahu defended his military actions in Lebanon and Gaza. Some countries left the room in support of the Palestinians, leaving empty seats. In order, I have a message for the tyrants of Tehran. If you strike us, we will strike you. There is no place. There is no place in Iran that the long arm of Israel cannot reach. And that's true of the entire Middle East. Far from being lambs led to the slaughter, Israel's soldiers have fought back with incredible courage and with heroic sacrifice. And I have another message for this assembly and for the world outside this hall. We are winning. And that's the news. Thank you for watching.